three. Roll call, please. Commissioner Enthusias. Here. Johnson. Here. Duquette. Here. Brocious. Here. Trustee Borkland. Bjorkland. Uh, Cattle Beater. Here. And President Lankfeld. Here. Here. The Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice. Okay. Public comment. This is an opportunity for anyone to address the Plan Commission on any issue. Please observe the time limit of three minutes while the plan commission encourages input from residents. Uh, it may not discuss or act on any issue that is not duly noticed on the agenda. Does Bobby want to speak? Or she just listening in? I don't believe so. All right, let's go to general business. Uh, approval of the minutes from the January 3rd, 2023 plan commission meeting. Do I have a motion? A motion to approve minutes. Do I have a second? Do I have a motion and a second to approve the minutes for the January 3rd, 2023 Planning Commission meeting? Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same. All right, discussion of Main Street, uh, Street Gate. This I, I put on. Um, right. well, there's nothing in here. No, there's here. nothing. Just Just turn around and here's your. No, no, no. It's interesting that this is probably one of the things that I get comments on mostly from residents and even people that drive through the town on uh, what our village looks like as you drive through on, on, on 14. And we get a lot of positive comments when we have the holiday uh, stuff up, the lights and the, uh, the wraps and everything. So I kind of put them in five different categories of what people have brought up. So the first is the landscaping of the entry signs. A lot of people think it's very plain looking. We have that nice pillar with the different types of activities. And then we just have kind of a slab of concrete. So a lot of people say, why aren't you putting some landscaping on the slabs part of it? You know, even a miniature lilac here or something in the background to kind of break up that side. Um, I, you know, that makes total sense to me. I'm thinking maybe we could get a Boy Scout who's doing an Eagle project to do something, you know, on that. Uh, that would be an option of getting it done. Um, the next one, uh, I've seen this in a number of uh, cities now. They're wrapping uh, the utility boxes and traffic uh, boxes. I think the one that really stands out to me is when you drive P at Bourbon, there's that big silver uh, utility box there. Mm -hmm. You know, is that utility or is that belong to the train? I don't know who's it belong to. It's okay. Railroad. Yeah. Yeah. If it's railroad, it definitely Oh, okay. Yeah, that's. And then there's like right down here at Bourbon and Brewery at Highway 14 by uh, Walgreens, there's the big traffic zone, and they've done those. So I don't know how expensive those wraps are, but it'd be kind of cool to do something that fits our theme, you know, having a trout come out of the water, grabbing a fly or the um, hiking trails or whatever, you know, something like that. And then the light poles, why we decorate them uh, for the holiday season, is there something we can do maybe in the summertime or a seasonal type right. thing? Um, you know, just to grab people's eyes when they drive through. And then uh, the banners, you know, we have those right now, the, the four different types of activities. I was brought up as why don't we do those seasonal and switch them out so there's a little bit of change on that. And then the last one, um, this is that the hillside. You know, you have the cemetery here in 14, the bank, Walgreens would be over here. And there's that flat part. We have the retaining wall right here. Yeah. Doing something, you know, I've heard where some people think we should do like, you put cross planes across here and like colored stones, or you put some type of sculpture or something, because you're coming right into town and there's just that 
nice hillside that's just saying, hey, put something here, you know. So those are uh, the, the five areas, and I thought we don't have a committee that really would do that, so I thought maybe we could look into that and come up with some, some ideas on each of these if we want, like I say. Uh, I, I, it'd be nice, you know, like I say, I think this one, um, we could probably get Boy Scouts or even Master Gardeners in Madison. I don't know if there's a Master yeah. Garden. We have a garden group here in town. Well, do we? Well, we have a kind of retired garden group, but they still get together. Okay, well, that's something, you know, and they that's what maintains some of the gardens and stuff. So I think that one's probably one that we could pull off fairly easily with very little cost. Can, I, can we have deer hanging in November? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, those are. <laughs> I'm thinking on uh, the light poles, banner, and hillside. Let's just give it some thought on things that we could potentially put on there that would do high pop. And I think a lot of us go through a lot of other small villages and see stuff. Um, just one other place for the improvement is the businessman sign on the corner of Kelcher's old lot on the corner right across the quick trip. Oh, yeah. The one that's built out of two by fours. Because oh, the lions oh, all the community groups. I think that can be isn't it fairly true? Yes, but it's it looks very that would be a proper word, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Better than what I was hoping. Oh, we, we can certainly put that on 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 the list then. I think we can just find a way of improving the way it looks. All right. So this is just the ideas that I wanted to lay out. So at the next meeting, can you come and maybe think of some things and we'll just do a brainstorming under each one of them, and then we'll take it from there. Does, does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. yeah. And do you think that kind of fits in our group? We did speak. We did when we did 14, but that I don't want to form another whole. No, but I wonder if we could see we look at some of those notes. Yeah, I was saying. Yeah, yeah, we can do that. Yeah. We could just take up those notes and just see. They the had a lot of suggestions. Yeah. There's ran an, out of money. We do, right. but they had a lot of suggestions. Yeah. There's, there's an entire plan. Right. Do you think we could find that for us? Yeah, we have. Okay, so we'll put that on. That's a good idea. So, yeah. examples of this utility and traffic wrap cabinet wraps that you've made us in. Yeah, they've done like green ones. They'll do, you know, like a tree on them, or they'll do. Uh, I guess I'm trying to avoid an accident at all costs. I don't, I don't believe he does wrap. I think he does a lot of signage. We use a group out of Barnwell. Uh, what do you wrap? Um, we've just wrapped uh, some vehicle doors um, and things like that. It's nothing super fancy. It's more with the cultures than with the school district. Okay. Because um, like TDS has all their vans wrapped, well, they get delivered to us and then the wrapping company comes in and wraps them all. Oh. Um, and they just sit there and they put them all together. Mm -hmm. um, can you get the name of that company? Uh, Rick Mueller, Mueller Graphics. I know it'll come to me eventually. Yeah, because I'll bet you they probably have done so. They've done all kinds of stuff. It goes, it covers just the south, cent south central start of the state, but they've been wanting to go further and it's getting so busy. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's becoming pretty popular. On that, and then I didn't put on there, and I don't know because you need some money, but you can kind of write grants for art. Have you seen Madison did it in a neighborhood? They had a contest and had a bunch of artists came in and painted their uh, fire hydrant. Then they got judged on it, and the winner got a uh, prize money. But they paid each artist so much for doing it. But they wrote. I think that was down near Williamson Street or something. They wrote a grant and got an art grant or something. Bain yeah. County Art gives out grants every year. Oh, okay. So we would say the bill could be eligible for. Yeah. I just, yeah, well, I, I will say, I think this is great. Like that you have a committee talk about different things that we could do within the village, especially things that were part of the streets, streetscape uh, discussion before. The only thing I will uh, say is it tends to be my department that is taking these banners and putting them up, taking them down. Yeah. Same with the light decorations. As we have, we don't have people at public facilities that are willing 
get up in in a lift so right now it's been dane or myself for okay. the most part so just keep that in mind when you think about some of the projects that are going to be closer. people to staff and everything i just yeah. this is just the starting point that like i say i get a lot of comments in this area and i i've been just keeping them in my head because you know but now you know this is what i have kind of now sharing and let's just take a look at it and see if we can do something mm -hmm. and i know you definitely if we can't get volunteers that's why i was thinking for by the signs it'd be one of those low maintenance or no maintenance planting mm -hmm. and stuff maybe natural or just something to break up those especially on the west end i think like a mural of our logo or something on the cement would be kind of nice too oh didn't even look that. Put that down on a list. Yeah. That would you can wrap after. You can. Mm -hmm. oh. Kim McCaffrey, you know her enough. You know her yeah. enough. Cool. She just wrote a book. Kim McCaffrey. She's one of the. Oh yeah. But she's she did a couple of the Bucky badges. Even when they did that, but she's oh, she's, an she's yeah. Well, she's retired. She was cute enough, but she's retired. I think she'd be great at that. It's like yeah. Jim's Butler's daughter. Jim and Jean's Butler's daughter. Oh. Well, but I think she would get into that. Yeah. She's retired. Do you ever see her? I can contact her. Yeah, yeah. just throw yeah. some ideas. Just throw all there. Yeah. yeah, you definitely. I don't have to see her. No, well, I mean, I know she's she's very very talented. Yeah. Maybe we can get the toilet bowl guy to do something clever. Yeah. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> yeah. 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 We kind of laugh, but. A lot of people try to have it when they change that come back. You hear people talk about, and even people who don't live here that just drive through saying, that was pretty creative what he did. I said, yeah, he's a plumber, so he has a lot of toilets and he must save them, you know. But anyway, so that's all I wanted to cover on this. So uh, next meeting, come with some ideas and stuff, and uh, maybe we can even get some examples and stuff. And Bill, are you still tied with... Uh, Boy Scouts. Scouts. I haven't been, but I can. I can. can you just reach out and see if there's any person coming up for an Eagle uh, Scout that they needed a project? Sure. Okay. Yep. Great. Because then we get more people involved in the community. We have the Girl Scouts come to see Flower at the Sunday Street. And they spill around the pool and down at Bear Park as well. For, the 4 H did as well. Oh, the Wonder Makers, I think it was. We have one Eagle Scout there. project right now. I think he's deciding on what to do to work with us or work with Ice Age, um, Gavin. Yeah, we're we'll probably not ready. Yeah. If there's someone coming up in the ranks, that's what the project is. Yeah. Problem with them is that they do it and then they're not there again. To, well, that's what I'm know, saying. That's, that's why maybe you get an Eagle Scout to put in the first thing and you get the guardian to maintain it. Yeah. And it would only be two, and if we made them small, yeah. it wouldn't be a lot of work. And then again, you could do some things like miniature uh, or dwarf uh, lilac uh, mm. bushes. You don't really have to do much of anything. Like that. You know, they grow about five feet and that's it. Put it to the side, you know. All right, good. All right. Uh, we are now at uh, number three discussion, uh, village water system development philosophy. Um, we're just... Since we don't have anybody here to ask the questions. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, seems good. Well, let's start. Uh, we saw the, the kind of a historical and uh, from our public works director, Jerry Gray. And just so everybody knows, it, and just to remind people, we had all these pieces, but Brian and I will be putting together a report to have everything we captured in one report. Just so you know, so we're not piecemealing in the sense of of uh, making this and all be put together. So you have Jerry saying, "I don't know, um, I don't know really how we're going to do this tonight mm -hmm. since they're not here to ask questions, um, comments or suggestions." And I can take them back to Jerry, I guess. On his at all, seemed pretty thorough. Yeah. It was interesting to know the history and when we converted over from wells to yeah. uh, public water. Yeah, that was good. Yeah. All right. Then. Oh, so, did, did, didn't you say there was two places that are still using wells in the village? I thought I thought there was 
One that had well and septic, and three that had yeah. low. Okay. If I, if I yeah. remember right, right. But that's correct. Is, am I right yeah. on that? Where is that? Uh, for his what's up here? Well, right here. Okay. As, as of today, there are only one one property within the service area still using a private well in Village Sewer. There are three properties using both private wells and private sewer. Oh, yeah, it's mixed up. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> Then, uh, I don't know who did the Sundance summary. What chronology? Yeah, was that you? I came from our files, but oh, okay. according to our files, I think the Wadapolis um, group put that together at the request of Mike Slavney. So I think that's where it came. Okay, thank you. But you're the one that sent it to us. Okay, very good. Thank you. And I think that was good. I, I just want to make sure you all um, know that this is bigger than just Sundance. This is a broad discussion. All right. And then uh, the next document, um, the Village of Coral Point, was that yours? With, or is this all? It looks like different types. So I'm thinking it's a. So I provided this two page. On two topics, health and density. Okay, that's from you then. Okay. All right, does anybody have any questions for Sonia? I guess my thinking that I took from that work, um, from the paragraph where she says, I don't really consider it development question, but then potential future developments beyond the immediate development. I guess that's where some of my you know, big concerns. It's like, okay, if we allow this here, the next parcel north or outside of that, it's like you're almost locking yourself into that, or it would be so expensive and even more expensive to bring in water past something you just approved with private wells. Um, and I don't know if you brought in there. It sounds like this doesn't happen much, it's generally discouraged. I don't know if you brought in any situations like that. Or, you know, not, not with regard to water systems or private wells, but I mentioned there that that's a kind of common fundamental concept of land division or zoning that you don't want to hinder future development, especially with land division. That's common language, always in our condition. Will this subdivision prevent the ability, or a landlocked person, for example, or will it prevent the ability to develop something beyond? So, like, good, good land development principles you want to. And then this just discusses, you know, are there some policies we could explore um, for safeguards <clears throat> if, like, a private well subdivision went forward? Um, I don't have any real good concrete examples, and um, but some of the things discussed in here, like the development agreement that would identify um, a strategy for going a municipal system sometime in the future, or what the cost sharing that would look like, or how that would happen, so that we don't. Have development effort. So that would be able to be explored in itself. And I know you already did a little bit <clears throat> in terms of this subdivision into a Sundance development, but that would be a policy to consider. Okay, Bill. So what would happen? So you talked about um abandoning the wells going from you know private to Using the public system, what does that entail to um, uh, abandon a private well? Yeah, it, that's usually handled by public works, so I don't do the detail, but I think you have to fill it with an approved uh, material. Um, that's not important. Yeah, yep, yeah, and get that certified by an inspector or DR or something, and um, just fill it up so that contamination doesn't be an issue. So municipalities put a lot of time and effort in operating programs like that. Or I included that because the idea is to try to phase these out, <laughs> not create more of them. Allegheny, I believe. And they have to be present once you do it. It's pretty straightforward. Okay. Any other questions? All right. So then, 
then the next one we have is from our village engineer. And this one has lots of numbers. <laughs> um, yeah. I guess I'm not really sure how to address this because I don't think anybody in this room can answer the question side. Yeah. Please, I think it's very informative. I've, I've seen it a couple times now, so uh, I have a little bit of understanding of what what he's referring to, but not clearly enough to uh, answer any questions that I understand. So. Um, but here's what I would here's what I would ask: uh, take a look at this, and if you have questions, send them to me because I see him at every staff meeting and then we can ask those questions and then I can get back to you. Um, um, if you have, you know, questions about what he put in there, um, I can spend all the pictures. Because, yeah, that was the, the last sentence in there. This kind of part of the last paragraph was what I was most concerned about too. It said that if you're you decide to use impact fees, but then the impact fees don't end up covering it, you can't basically have to. The general fund has to make up the difference. Yeah. I don't know, like, what is there a certain time limit on those impact fees? Mm -hmm. You know what that is? Seven years. No. To use them, oh, but, but for the well, I think we went out 20 or 40 years, right? Oh, yeah, when you talked about that. Yeah, because the well that we built, I believe impact fees, again, I'm just spitballing, maybe Kevin was yeah. between 28 and 40 percent of the cost will be covered by impact fees. And that's, we did, what did we do, 40 lots a year? Or some formula that you use to but, but I know we had we spent a lot of time discussing how much we could get from impact fees. Yeah. And maybe we were more like around 25%, 28. You, I remember yeah. that. I think we ended up at 28% is the, the call, the number I recall. Um, but I don't know if it really, you know, didn't the Public Service Commission have to approve that too? No? The, uh, I think they have to they had to approve it. So no matter what we do, it gets, you know, even if we'd said something, it would, uh, somebody else, it was public service commission. Well, this public service commission, we have to go for rate. And they look at not only that, but the turn usage yeah. and everything. So I think that was part it, of the yeah, calculation, the calculation. Yeah, right. part of the calculation. And there was also tied to the borrowing for the DNR. Yep. If we were made, we would have enough revenue to pay for um, I mean, does this does this really like this bigger picture come down to to one thing, which is we have to decide if we want to do um, this new phase and an additional water system in a new phase in a new area, right? It's either that or or just do everything in wells. Well, that because I don't think like, really looking at this and what uh, Sonia said, we really can't do half and half financially. Well. I'm gonna, I think your statements are correct. And where it comes in is the funding. I'm not right. I'm not saying autumn that it has to all be by funding has to be by all by impact or it all has to be this. I think there could be, and that's why part of it is could there be a partnership, private public partnership where developers they have, we pay half to expand it so we have growth and everything like that. I mean, that's I, that's to me um, where there's there's discussion, but to really have that discussion, I think we got to have all the information, and we're getting we're pretty close to this. Now, what is interesting in this um, with Lasonia's go back um, was there's been impossible to find a legal case where you had wells that went bad and then the, the village had or city had to pay for them because it just doesn't happen 
right? I mean, we're finding that it doesn't. But I see Madison, you mentioned Madison, and they have a real strict every five years. So I kind of want to now explore Madison and see what they do, if some, what their process is. If a well goes bad, where's the burden? Because I think that is, and I have a, you can't get a, a, a person to answer at the PSC. So I have an email sent to their contact saying, does the PFC have it within their power to require a municipality to provide water? So I have I have that out there. I just haven't got a response back. And I don't know if I will or not. But that would have been my only thought is uh, since the, that's a utility and they do have control over certain other parts of turning off power and turning it on and, and that that. Maybe they have something, so I was going to check into that. Unless someone here knows the answer. They have jurisdiction over something like that. But Kevin, I think when you get to the bottom line, that's those are two op the two options. But I think the one option, there's multiple options in getting that. All right. Let's then just keep going on. All right, we'll go to the, uh, the one that was provided by Sundance Development LLC. That's after the photos of the different types of well houses and booster houses. Oh, I guess one, the one right before it's a sustainability one. Kevin, I guess you're on, on that. Were you did just group do this or was just Melissa on her own? Group? You know? Uh, I don't know if the group made a resolution or not. I'm sorry. No, no, that's fine. There was no resolution that came to the board. I'm just wondering if you guys all talked about it or if this was just her taking lead on it. Either way, it's fine. I yeah, I think this was when we did talk about uh, the water issue. Yes, I didn't uh, recall this being an outcome, but I would say that we have often put Melissa in charge of bulldogging yeah. a project, so I would bet this is the case here. Okay, all right, very good. So then we go to Sundance. If you want to let Keo on, and we can. Uh. Yeah, Before hello everyone. Uh, this, just a just an introduction to the document. Um, this is not really changed. So would from you like the, to speak at this time? Uh, yeah, sure. Can you hear me? Okay. Uh, let's see. Can you hear me? All right. Sure. Uh oh. All right. Yeah. It's showing. Oh, I, I I show up as speaking oh, on my end. Here? I don't know how good the sound is. <laughs> yeah, let let me know when you can hear me, or if you can hear me. <laughs> Yo, can you try to say something again if you can hear us? <laughs> yeah, I can hear you fine. Can you hear me all right? Yeah, let's see here. Uh, that's, that's oh, here speaker. You. Yeah, you can hear me all right? Oh, I can. Okay, great. Um, so this document doesn't contain any new information. It's just uh, uh, cleaned up and uh, trimmed uh, uh, based on Kevin's comment at the last meeting. So there's nothing new here. Uh, there's no real changes. The next document is was new. The the spreadsheet. Oh, okay. Um, so this is a this is really just a ballpark uh uh analysis. Um, so you know I wouldn't take numbers to the bank. Uh, you know, in the try to discriminate between a thousand dollars here or five thousand dollars there, but it's just to give you an overall. Uh, idea. I kind of simplified the costs and tried to make them uh, generic, but still be useful. I noticed that some of my municipal water numbers, in other words, the cost of 
providing public water might be a little low when I look at the uh, engineer's report, and maybe that just reflects inflation or uh, pressure zone two. I was only I, I was using maybe some older numbers that referred only to pressure zone three, but of course pressure zone two comes into play as well. Um, let's see. So you can look through the numbers and kind of uh, draw some conclusions. Jay had asked uh, for a comparison with wells versus municipal water at different at a subdivision size of a different number of uh, different numbers of lots. And I guess the takeaway here or some of the takeaway here is what I referred to in that previous uh, text document that we passed over, which is that uh, you'd be looking at a very large, uh, a, either a very large subdivision or overall a very large number of units before you would even start to break even if the water costs went directly to uh, a particular development or even a couple of developments. Um, and even um, and even that doesn't give you the full picture, right? Because if you're trying to get, uh, you know, if a developer is choosing where to develop, they're probably not going to pick a development whose costs are much, much higher uh, than another location. And that's just because uh, uh, lot prices in the county, uh, you know, are essentially the same, right? Uh, whether you build in village of Oregon or the village of Cross Plains or, or what have you, uh, you know, uh, the, the market price for a lot doesn't vary that much. Um, other things you'd notice here are that uh, lot prices for uh, a well, a lot with a well versus a lot on municipal water are different um, because uh, you can't charge as much uh, you know, there's a there's a price premium that comes with being on municipal water because as the buyer, you don't have to build a well. Uh, and that's reflected in here as well. Um, like I said, ballpark numbers. Uh, and and uh, and again, I think I'll go through that engineer's report and see if I need to revise any of the costs of the uh, infrastructure. You've got total cost, where there's two columns, it's total cost and then cost per lot. And then that whole bottom section that says per lot analysis is just lot, you know, based on lot prices. There's no total numbers there. No, this is exactly what I was looking for. This is very helpful. I just haven't had uh, time to actually play with the numbers yet, but this is exactly what we were looking for. Really appreciate you putting the time into this. Sure, you got it. Anybody else have a question? Oh, go ahead. Yeah, so this is the first time I'm seeing this too, but I think this kind of aligns with my, with my memo in the housing density section, which is if you are going to consider it on a case by case basis, the developer should be required to do some type of housing um, density analysis that compares what that breaking point would be. What the threshold would be, and I think that's what this is doing. So I don't, I can't tell here exactly what the threshold would be, but that's why I provided the attachment of the Sundance chronology because it discusses, you know, the first iteration was 200 lots, and then you know wherever it ended up later, we went down as low as 50. Yeah, and then I think back up again, but that density level would then be a question for. The village was 200 lots really too high of density. I guess at the time it was rejected as being too high, but a density of two and a half acre units per acre is like less than standard residential density, usually something like three dwelling units per acre. So it's pretty standard. I wouldn't call it high density at two and a half at all. And if that's a threshold, if that's a break even point, then it pays for the municipal water system. Then, you know, does that tell the company? That's CNZ engineering. Go ahead, Cameron. Just on the density, that, does that, is there any way you can run the calculation with like, and I think this goes to some of your other stuff in the middle, like your metal and like how to pay for it and stuff, but like there are other farms up there that have to be percentage of homes instead of doing 
200 lines in the ones that can you look at you know starting with all the points to the room these are these are calculations 390 okay and three i believe but, three other owners are going in to be Okay, so 398, I guess. Cool. Yeah, and that's right. when Sundance was at 160. Yeah, 100. They were at with Rossler and Keel, I remember, 160. You could have a maximum. They calculated going to where okay. the roller curves up to where Weber. Um, yeah, yeah, Linda and Fowles and, and Rossler were all coming in. And then, yeah, going up over. They had 398. His, his engineer said, okay. Is that, was that with, because I also know that like your lot size, there's a little bit of a function if it's um, private or if it's private or <laughs> the public, I guess, well, correct me if I'm wrong, but I assume, or not, I assume I heard, if it's like private well, the lot needs to be bigger to account for well and stuff, but if you're on public water, you can get customers to close together and have slightly smaller lots. There's some sort of function of you know getting public water up there can allow. So I guess was that calculation of 398 done with us providing water for once? Because no, this was different. This was because uh, we were just when we were doing that calculation, we were looking at cost sharing. What it would what would be there that would be able to pay to help pay in the future for the infrastructure on there. So. Um, I, I I don't know. I don't know how much of a difference that makes. I mean, yeah, I'm guessing it's not major. It's just something we need to keep in mind. Right. With wells, less houses. With public water, more houses, and then we get you know better layouts here, especially if we're looking at more than just the one property. Can I uh, can I interject something on that subject of density and water? Sure. Um, I don't think it's so much that you could that the uh, presence of a well requires any change in the lot size. It's that without wells, uh, you cannot, as far as I know, effectively build multifamily, include multifamily housing and higher density that way. Uh, when you restrict yourself to wells, you are effectively restricted to um, single family homes because of the sprinkler requirements for a higher density uh, multifamily housing. Uh, so uh, uh, yeah, it's not so much a, a change in lot size that, uh, you know, unlike septic, a well doesn't require that much, um, but it precludes, uh, having wells precludes uh, multifamily uh, effectively. Right, well, but you're, you're also right that um, whoever mentioned that these, uh, these numbers, these density numbers were not particularly dense, even at 200 lots. That is also true. We're still talking about lower than standard uh, uh, urban residential density. Uh, but at a certain point, you also run into the uh, run into the traffic issue. And so uh, until you have uh, land that stretches across the Meyer property, uh, brings in another uh, outlet, you know, another major street other than brewery road um you 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 run into some limitations there so the the spreadsheet can't really reflect everything <laughs> all right judy go ahead you know you may or may not know this but like when i think of champions run they are on you know i'm sorry when i think of champions run are they on well and septic because they and they're some of those houses are eight thousand square feet and i mean they're huge some are probably even bigger than that so I know uh, what you're saying, if you multi-family, but you can still do a pretty big house. Oh, yeah, so, yeah. No, it's purely a code uh, okay. issue. It's just that uh, multifamily past, I think, duplexes require sprinklers, and yes. you can't do sprinklers on wells. So, no, there's no limit oh, okay. to, the, to the size of the house, that's for it sure. Yeah, no, I'm sorry. It, it was th that it, it's just a code issue where, where multifamily past, uh, I think, a duplex now requires a sprinkler, a sprinkler requires public water effectively. Any other questions for Keel? Go ahead, Sonny. 
this would be in his spreadsheet or that there was one of the other documents that talked about potential routing for waterline if we're going to run water. Like they talked about going thinnest to brewery and then up brewery. Is our project for brewery, at least up to Waffenberg, designed to put in water that would accommodate that? Or would they have to rip up the street and everything? Well, I just went through and looked on the, the sizing is there. The only thing is with if we would use a booster, then uh, for that section there, they would need to have high pressure pipes that we don't have in right. That's not scheduled to be put in. So there would potentially be from the park um, up to Baltimore. Right. But for the cost, that might be in the spreadsheet from Gary's notes and Brian's notes. Yeah. Assume that full cost for that. Yeah. Nothing's in such a yeah. matter of uh, yes, that yeah, yeah that yeah. that's why the brewery road improvement uh, is as big as it is. Uh, it's not just the improvement of the road; it's the water main, you know, a, a large uh, diameter water main going through it. Uh, just one clarification that I see here that's kind of misleading: the very top under base costs. I sh I'll relabel it and resend it. Yeah, right there. It says sewer, uh, and then in parentheses internal streets. That's it. Should kind of be the other way around. That should be internal streets, including sewer. The the those costs are not just the cost of putting in uh, sewer in the internal streets. It's mostly the cost of the road. Yeah. Any other questions? All right. Thank you, Keel. Really appreciate it. Very helpful. Yeah, you're welcome. All right. And then uh, the last document we have is from uh, the fire chief. Um, I did, once I received this, I met with them because I wanted to make sure I had a clear understanding of what they were um, writing in there. Um, and, and just to learn. So, just so everybody knows, uh, we, our fire department has the capability of protecting homes that are on, well, I mean, Town of Cross Plains, Town of Barry, they have all of that. Uh, what he points out is that there's two things that make a big difference uh, in a village is one, you have to bring the water in. So we have to be able to, when we design it, to think about trucks coming in and out. Right now, when we have a fire, the trucks pull up, hook up to the fire hydrant, and they're pretty stationary. If you don't have the municipal water there, then what they're doing is basically running trucks or they're doing a daisy chain. So they would hook up one truck wherever the closest fire hydrant is, and then that would go to another truck, another truck off the hill. So there's a daisy chain, which obviously takes a lot more mutual aid. Uh, the other thing he said, most of the um, well homes that are in the townships are really spaced apart. They're on big lots and stuff. Um, in the village, it's it's not that way. They're close. And his example is on Gill's Way. Without the fire hydrant, they probably would have lost a couple of other houses because there's just not enough water pressure and water because our homes are closer together. So um, those are the things, like I say, he says, we have the equipment, we do it. That's the fire protection we do. But there are differences within um, the village. And the main one is for him is the speed of getting people there and fighting the fire because of uh, hooking up and keeping that fire engine stationary versus using up the water, going, getting more, having another truck go. So that's about all I really know. So don't ask me a whole lot because I'm not a firefighter. Go ahead, Bill. So the, um, did he talk about, I mean, he said, you know, one of the issues that he is concerned about is minimum distance between the buildings. Does he have a recommendation or can we get a recommendation from him? So, you know, what What do you suggest? As, uh, I, yeah, I could do that. You know, we could ask him that. You know, yeah, I don't know. I know ours are, what, 20 feet apart, and that clearly, in his opinion, wasn't far enough. Right. I, yeah. think, I think we're, in some of the districts, we're down on the 
14. Yes. So and that's what he said. He said Creekside, you know, like Creekside, what? Creekside, um, Creekside, 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 we made them. Yeah, I think it's a seven foot seven. Yeah, seven. Yeah. So we should do smaller lots. So, but I will ask them that question. Yeah, that'd be interesting. Um, so. The thing that no matter if it's a question or just a concern, um, you know, we talked about the, the road moving the truck shot. I'm more concerned about moving fully loaded water trucks up and down these steep hills repeatedly in a fire incident. Um, not just do you have a place in the cul-de-sac to turn around, but that hill on Brewery Road or other places where, you know, this could be an issue. You just run, and especially in the winter, running fully loaded trucks up and down that hill multiple times is a big concern. But that's how we're going to, we would have to fight fires. So, on that, for Sundance, um, <laughs> I think we've kind of gone every single way there is. Where are we? Where do we stand now? That's for the plan. Are we talking mostly city water and then the backlash being on tour? Or are we talking everybody being on the uh, we we are we haven't talked about the original Sundance plan with everybody on the road. Okay. That's what it is. Um as you know, we'd have to restart the process on right. that. So right now what we're trying to do is get what is the overall view. Of the village, so we can use that in determining sure. what the outcome. Right. So well, I don't think it, none of it has been this. Okay. Well, you know, that's why I'm, I'm thinking. You know, just the backlash has well, or have well. Then you just do the daisy chain from where there is hydrants to those backlash. But again, that's a lot of. I, I and again, I I have I'm not a firefighter, so I don't know how many <laughs> trucks you would need for right. a flood. I don't know how long the, the big holes is. I don't I don't know any of that. So that would be a question for. Um, so I could ask, I could ask Justin at the staff meeting, give him a heads up on it, or I'm seeing him at a meeting of the fire board. Ask him, okay, what is the distance yeah. between daisy chain and truck, and what is the efficiency of that? I have very, I have never even worked a fire truck or been on one. So, but we pay for it. Well, yeah, I know. <laughs> that, that's a whole technical skill set that's outside. All right, go ahead, Calvin. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to pull it up from my memory. It's not it's not coming, but zone three, which this area would be in, correct? Is that right? Yes. Um, how many other home sites outside of this area would be in, in zone three? Was there? Ooh, currently, zero. I, but, but if you look at it, it would be. I, yeah, but I'm talking about like PI and other. Yes, okay. it would be part the upper parts of PI. Upper parts. And how yeah. many do we have that at least an acreage count of that? Or do we, we ever do a calculation like, of that? And we should because if you remember uh, back in 2008 when Viridian they were yeah. purchasing and they were going to put like 300 houses, I remember they were going to pay for half of a, a reservoir because we needed the reservoir for that. So. I don't know if I, I guess I, mean, I guess as we're doing calculations on zone three, yeah. I mean, it shouldn't that be in the calculation? It's one hundred percent on that. We could try to dig that up and see if we did that. And I'll bet you, Brian. Or uh, yeah, because I mean, we it's were. Safe. I mean, they took us on tours and everything like that. Because I guess I'm wondering if we're calculating right. if we're calculating two hundred up here, if we're calculating four hundred or eight hundred. What number are we really? Right. No, I agree. Yeah. That's very. And important. I know that's going to come back and or let. It, Big part of that would be in the financing discussion, but uh, but certainly that's going to be at some point the discussion to have. Yeah, <laughs> so agree with you. All right, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, and then how do you finance across? Yeah, whatever expected density acreage of houses we're going to cover all of that stuff. Yeah, no, yeah. no, you're absolutely right on that. And those are just more information we have to collect and make it a report. We're moving along pretty close. Pretty good here. So, anything else? Yeah, Cameron. Mm -hmm. I have, I have, I didn't pull it up ahead of time. Uh, we just approved like last year the future planning of the village map. Official map. Yes. Yeah. Is any of this accounted on there that we could like look at? For that just shows the official map. Just shows where right. residential yeah. housing is going to be. It doesn't really show great. At least I don't remember it. But it does show Potential. this whole area up here okay. in the official map. And PI, and remember, we actually put the road through PI property this time. 
that we didn't have before. But that, at least what I've seen, it doesn't break it down. Uh, I think it's zoning types, maybe. Yeah, I'm just looking for the I guess yeah. I'm now coming back. I figure it out. Yeah. Judy. We're finding we're that, we're that we're in Palestine, we're in South. Is that village of Prince? Is that village or is that township? That is township. Like, Dr. Worth is like, when you're going out of town, that somewhere he just passed away. I believe Doc's in township. That's in all township. in town. Anything past, like, on Dennis, anything okay. past, okay, like, town, yeah. Town. Like, where Lisa and Jeff kind of live. Oh, they're, oh, they're in the town. They're over there. Okay. Because I know that's Lisa. No. Well, for Anything else? Is that the one like adjacent to PI? Right. Okay. Oh. Well, good. All right. We will uh, continue this uh, next month. All right. Let me go back here. Uh, Anybody else have anything on this? I don't want to push anybody out. Otherwise, do I have a motion? Well, I just, I, James, if we're going to go back to this next month, could you, like, what's your, are we going to have just more pieces to this puzzle? Are we going yeah. to have staff here? Are we going to have the engineer here? Uh, well, we'll, I guess I, it's up to you. I have to do my piece. I'm trying to get the liability piece together. Um, so I know that's up. I'd have to look at this list, what else is missing. I think you brought up a whole thing. Well, even today, we talked about a few more documents that we'd like to see. So those will come back. Okay. But then, in uh, and do we have a, a timeline? So that'd be February, I'm sorry, March. Um, are we trying to get this to an April or a May meeting to where we have like the, the big sit down? Yes. I'm looking, I, I'm hoping, you know, we originally thought April 30th. We're yeah. probably not going to make that, but first meeting in April is going to be, to me, close enough. Um, I would think that would be good because I, I need Brian to start working on putting this all together in one report. And I think when we do that, then we'll bring in the okay. engineer, you know, because we'll probably have that just the only topic. And that's my hunch is to times past, that'll probably be two meetings because the first meeting will be a presentation of questions. The second meeting might be more of a uh, a decision or yeah, I agree with you. I just want to get all the pieces thank you together first, you know, so we have everything. Yeah, Ron. Is there any point too hard to get I don't know like all of the like the A B C D with the options, but like is there any point where we want to get still community feedback? Especially if we're talking about like where where how to pay for it. Well I, I think I think we can get community feedback on the overall philosophy. I don't think I don't think we'll have we certainly won't have a plan of how much the village is gonna would pay or anything like that. They would be options that we could be looking at and be going to the board, but we could certainly throw out there um do a public hearing or a forum on what people's philosophy is on. Uh, private well versus municipality. But as you can see, it's extremely complicated. So someone's gonna to have to put together a presentation so everybody understands it. And I don't I, I don't know if it's so advanced that that's it. Clearly, if we ever got to the point where we were gonna put money in for an infrastructure, clearly that would be absolutely. But I don't I I'm not even looking that we're gonna to get to that point at the end. I think that's an option that'll look more to the you know, what we'd be looking at in the future potentially. I'm not looking for us to come up with a slide. What's the short term thing you're looking for? The short term thing is having a philosophy so when developers come in, we can put a standard out there of what we're looking for. So there's no hidden agenda or they get spend tons of money and then we yank them on something like that. You know, whatever the outcome is, the outcome is, and then that's what we let people know. And that's what we're trying to do is get clarification. And we memorialize that philosophy in what document? Well, right now, our, um, and I don't, is it our master plan? Should be the count plan. Yeah, count plan has it in there 
that they are allowed, but that has no guidelines on when they're allowed. And I don't think we'd ever say zero, um, but that's that's what started this. So we're really looking at what are the guidelines for that, or do we change our comprehensive plan? And that should be coming up pretty soon anyway, right? I don't think it's every 10 years, right? Yeah. So, so well, it's every 10 years. 2020. To, but I think they're talking about, because that's one of the things they want to do, is help people update theirs because they know 10 years is too long. So they have a, I wanted to say it was every three years or something, you're supposed to review it and do updates on it. I don't know. I, I, they throw so many numbers out there. I'm on this one of the council committees, and they've mentioned that a couple of times that that's one of the things they want to do is get involved. So if they're not always just when developers come, they want to be part of the Replanning proactive rather than reactive, yeah, yeah. So, uh, they were talking about doing that, they could only do so many per year, yeah. You know, they're looking to help communities with planning better for urban service area amendments where they get ahead of a development proposal, but not necessarily like a full comp. Well, so this is a different, model. this is a different group. This is a group that's made up of village, uh, well. You know, there's village presidents and uh, mayors and administrators, and then two members of the Carpsey board, and then their staff. And it was eight meetings. And we're coming to the end in May, we'll have a report. But they want to expand a little bit more than just the service area, as a because they have the staff and all this information that they feel they can be helpful in the comprehensive plans, which I into that in the long run. So I, I'm not sure you'll see the recommendations. I don't want to say too much because it might all change. In these meetings. But I can tell you they are looking at helping. Uh, absolutely, that word has been thrown around almost at every meeting. Something new. Yeah, I've talked to Steve Stein. Oh, you have? Okay. Okay. All right. Do I have a oh, I mean, motion to adjourn? All right. Thank you. All right. All right. A motion and a second to adjourn. All in favor, say aye. All right. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you. 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 Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. 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 Th